Fam, fam, what's up? Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube, coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama nearly a three-point, fa three-touchdown favorite against Arkansas this weekend. It's an 11 o'clock kick. It's homecoming. There's a lot to go over. I'll take your calls. Call online is open. We have two callers in the call queue. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Tonight, we're playing You Make the Call. And what that means is you guys call into the show, and I'm going to ask you questions one through five. On tonight's lineup, we got, is Bama better than Arkansas by two touchdowns? And I ask that because the line is set at 19 points, so just under three touchdowns, but over two touchdowns. Who is the MVP so far through six games? Now, today, I put up a video, and I listed my top 10 players thus far. Um, I want to get your take on who you think is the MVP of this team so far, maybe from the offense and from the defense. Who are we sleeping on right now? Who's not getting enough notoriety? Who should we be talking more about? And who is your number one in college football as of today, especially with the loss of Texas? You got Georgia sitting up there. You got Michigan sitting up there. Someone else? Is it potentially Florida State? I want to get your take tonight. And then number five, this is the fifth question I'm going to ask you tonight. Toughest remaining game for Alabama. They're at the bottom of that graphic. You have Arkansas coming up this weekend. Then you have Tennessee and LSU. And before LSU, there is an open week. And then you travel to Kentucky. You travel to Auburn. And before Auburn is Chattanooga. Okay? So let's let the good times roll. And let's get the party started. We go to the phone lines. It's a 470. Let's get it started right now. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the show. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson, who I'm on the line with, and where are you calling in from? All right, we took the strike on the first one. All right, 470, what's up? You're on the line with Kyle Henderson, who I'm on the line with, and where are you calling in from? Hey, yo, what's up, Kyle? Thank you for talking to How you doing, bro? Hey, what's up, Andrew? I appreciate you uh, joining the show, man. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a great October 11th. It's already October 11th. You know, on the 31st, that's Coach Saban's 72nd birthday, which is pretty... Uh, amazing yeah yeah that's his that. he's a halloween baby um that's also the first night of the college football playoff ranking so you got trick-or-treating you got little debbie's galore for coach saban and you got the college football playoff ranking so um andrew from douglasville welcome on in man take it away all right so uh i think bama definitely would be Arkansas by more than two touchdowns if we play play like we have the last couple weeks um Especially if we play, uh, play like we did in the uh, Mississippi State game, we, I think that was our best performance all season. Um, and uh, you know that A and M game we did pretty good, but we had you know too many penalties from mm -hmm. our Vikings. And uh, um, but we only got out with the win. It's a tough environment. Um, so I, I think if we play like we did against Ole Miss and uh, um, and um, Mississippi State, sorry, I think we definitely uh, beat them by two touchdowns, more than two touchdowns, and then. Um, I think the MVP, I think on offense is definitely Jalen Murrow. Mm -hmm. No defense, that's a tough one because we got a lot of good defensive guys. Um, I think I'm going to go with Chris Braswell. Nice. Uh, because he had the pick six, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then he had the kick six. Mm -hmm. And I think I think he's had a couple other – I don't know if he's had any other picks, but I, he's had, I don't, gosh, I don't even know how many sacks and QB pressures and tackles for loss and all that good stuff. So he's – I think he's definitely uh, MVP on the defensive side of the ball. Um, who are we sleeping on? Uh, who are we sleeping on on the team? Like, or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, I was thinking like when we think about the team collectively, who is like one player that we're not necessarily talking about that could maybe have a great you know the uh, next second half of the season or someone who's doing well right now that we just haven't talked enough about. I don't think we talked about Malachi Moore enough. Yeah. And I, I listened to yeah. some other Alabama shows, and mm -hmm. they were talking about, you know, he plays like three different positions depending mm -hmm. on the snap, and he's out. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully he'll be back in either this week or next week, hopefully. But he, he, he plays three positions depending on which formation we're doing, if we're doing nickel, nine, mm -hmm. or money. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so when he's out, we have that three separate guys coming to fill that position. So Malachi Moore is definitely, we're sleeping on him with, the most right now because he's just amazing and he's a senior. So this is it for him. And, you know, I hate that he's missing one or two weeks. And, uh, well, well, that's he, not, that's not, uh, that's not necessarily true. I know there was some 
there was some, uh, you know, other channels, or whatever, that said he's out for Saturday, but that's not true according to Coach Saban. If you listen to his uh, Wednesday press conference, he said that those guys are probable for this Saturday. So, um, and that includes James Burnup, and that includes Malachi Moore, and I think probable means like game time decision for Coach Saban. So he didn't list him as completely out, um, which I think is great news regarding Malachi Moore. And then he said that Ja'Cory Brooks, um, who didn't finish the game last week against Texas A&M that he's been able to practice that week. So that's kind of your injury report regarding the Alabama Crimson Tide going into this weekend, along with the fact that Emmanuel Henderson was back on the sidelines. Remember, we haven't seen him because he's been dealing with a hip injury. Um, but, you know, I guess we'll have to see, like, game time decision if Malachi Moore is going to be able to go or not against Arkansas. So he's not ruled out by any means just yet. Um, all right, so on with Andrew from Douglasville. Uh, so let's uh, let's finish out right here. So we got um, who is your number one in college football right now, Andrew? Honestly, I don't think it's anyone in the top ten. I think if Bama wow. does what we're supposed to do and take care of business, we should definitely be number one. I think we're better than Georgia. I think we're better than Michigan. Who has Michigan played? Uh, mm-hmm. We're definitely better than the little bro Ohio State, um, better than any of those Pac-12 teams. Um, definitely better than Penn State. I mean, those are all good teams, don't get me wrong, but I mm-hmm. think Bama is definitely better than all of them if we do what we're supposed to do and, and don't make stupid mistakes, you know, we if we play like Bama. Um, because we have a lot more talent than any of those teams. i um, got the GOAT coaching us, you know, it's just if, if we play like we're supposed to and not do stupid stuff and not make stupid mistakes like we've, we've seen the last couple of years. We've, we've done it to ourselves the last couple of years. We haven't played a team that's better than us. Mm-hmm. We just haven't played like we're supposed to. Mm-hmm. So when, when we play like we're supposed to, we're the, we're the best team. It's just we always play like we're supposed to. Uh, but, no, I think Bama should be number one right now. And I don't think any of those teams is, is better than Bama. So I, I can't say any of those teams is number one if I don't think, they get, if I don't think they're uh, better than Bama. Maybe, All right. maybe that's um, being arrogant. We have a, a question you know, inside um, the comment box. Uh, can you go over college football playoff scenarios? So real quick, it looks like this. I mean, there were still a long ways out, but – the way that the college football ladder sets up for Alabama is actually works out pretty well. And the one team that, it, that you have to kind of root for to continue to win is Georgia. And then if Alabama takes care of business, they, they are 100% in if they win the SEC championship. So you have Georgia and Alabama meeting for the SEC title, which would be basically a playoff play in game. Now, the other teams, they all play each other, which is great. I mean, Michigan still plays Ohio State and Penn State. Ohio State plays Penn State and Michigan. Um, you know, Oklahoma just beat Texas, but they got to beat them again, uh, probably in the Big 12 championship. And then the Pac-12 teams, they all play each other. They're undefeated right now. Washington and Oregon play USC. Um, I think they have what the, the one of the worst defenses in the country. Um, so though all the it, it works out perfectly if Alabama just keeps on winning. So you honestly kind of want Georgia to keep winning and you want Alabama to keep on winning for those two teams to meet. And then it's a playoff play-in game. And then you just, you know, let the chips fall where they may. And I think that, and I said this earlier, if Alabama's offense, I think it's the title of the show, if they ever catch up with the defense, this team's making a run. Honestly. I mean, argue with it. Michigan hasn't played anybody. Georgia hasn't played anybody. Ohio State and Michigan, they're going to settle it out. But, I mean, the the playoffs, the way that they align, and I know this is all rat poison and it's all focused on Arkansas, but it's okay because this team is working towards that final goal of making the playoffs, making the SEC championship. It starts on Saturday. It continues on Saturday, one game at a time, but the offense is playing much better than they were. This is a completely different team that played Texas. All right, Andrew, uh, last question, man, uh, before I get to my next caller. Uh, toughest remaining game, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, at Kentucky, at Auburn. Go ahead. What do you think? That is a tough one, dude. Um, all these teams can be really good when they want to be. I'm going to say the Iron Bowl because there was always mm-hmm. some crazy stuff that happens when you play Jordan Hare. There's some there's some crazy juju at Jordan Hare, man. It's just um, something else. So I think that would definitely be the toughest game. Um, and then I think uh, Tennessee and LSU definitely give us a run for money. Kentucky's pretty good. That's at Kentucky. So that's definitely going to be a challenge. Um, and I don't know, Tennessee, LSU, and Kentucky, they're all pretty close. I don't know who's better than the other. I mean, they're all pretty good teams. But definitely the Iron Bowl. Definitely. Arkansas, Arkansas sucks. So, I mean, they, they, they shouldn't even really compete with us if we don't do stupid stuff. And, if, you know, if we play like we're supposed to. I, I think definitely the Iron Bowl because um, even Bryce Young, we remember Bryce Young two years ago. We had that mm-hmm. double overtime thrill. Uh, they beat the Mac Jones-led team mm-hmm. by uh, um, a field goal. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they beat that 2013 team, which was a really good team, by the way. So, I mean, every time we go in the Jordan here, man, crazy stuff happens. So, yeah, definitely the Iron Bowl. So, but if we get back past the Iron Bowl, you know, even if we lose the Iron Bowl somehow um, by like a field goal or something crazy like that, if we come back and beat Georgia, how are they going to keep us out of the playoffs? You know, it's not going to keep the SEC champions, uh, champion out of the playoffs. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, especially year, it's, 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 especially if Georgia continues to win. All right, Andrew, I got to run to my next caller, man, but I appreciate you calling in. Uh, thank you very much for the feedback, man. I always appreciate the support. All right, man. Roll tide, man. Roll tide to you, man. All right, there's Andrew out in Douglasville getting it going. We got a 601, a 205, and a 334. Uh, coming up next, my name is Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube. Now, I- I'm serious. I mean, Alabama, and I know everybody's starting to talk about Alabama once again, and everybody had di- the sa- it was the same people that discounted Alabama after the loss to Texas. Everybody, there was a large percentage of people watching this show out in the national scene that discounted them, that completely threw this team away. Right. Think about it. Think about all the people. Now they're saying, oh, it's good to have Bama back. Of course, it's good to have Bama back. Bama supports college football. They support all the jobs in college football. ESPN, every single website on three rivals 24 seven. This channel included everything revolves off Alabama football. A hundred percent. You don't think ESPN on three rivals 24 seven that they're all praying that Alabama makes the playoffs one million percent. Right. So there is Bama fatigue when they like to spin that because that's the narrative. But also, it's much better when Alabama gets in the playoffs. And on top of that, on top of Alabama's own merit, that's a completely different team that played against Texas. Think about the team today. Think about how the passing game continues to evolve. Think about all the people that were hating on Jalen Milrow that said that he couldn't throw the football, that they were a run first team. And look what he did against Texas A&M. They went into Texas A&M. They took care of business. They took their lumps against Texas. That team grew up. The team continues to grow up. And the people now talking about Alabama because it's better for Alabama football to be in the mix. Okay, yeah, right. We saw Powell Feinbaum saying that they're a sleeper team. Alabama is not a sleeper team. They're, they're supposed to be in the playoffs. That is a standard. That's why so many people were pissed off at the beginning of the season because that wasn't the standard that we're accustomed to. But this team has never deviated from the defense. Never. That was a good Texas team. The Texas team beat them straight up. But in terms of where the defense is, the defense is the backbone of this team. And if that offense ever catches up with the defense, this team is going to win another national championship. And this will be Saban's best coaching job ever. This week on, on Wednesday, he said, it's a challenging, enjoyable season. Saban is loving this. He's a coach. He's getting to coach. Tonight, he had the lecture. I have the lecture drop in at 10, just so you guys can rewatch it again. This is what he said. He said, nothing is acceptable except your best. Nothing is acceptable about your best. Like, play that into your life. Think about that. When you wake up, nothing is acceptable except your best. Tell that to your kids. Tell it to your wife. Tell it to everybody you know. That's the mindset of Saban. That's what Saban is saying. You also have an eclipse on Saturday. All right. I just had to get that out there. All right. Kyle Henderson, Bama Football on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. I appreciate you guys being here so much. Um, we go back to the phone lines, and it is a 601. Hey, thanks for being patient on the line with Kyle Henderson, who I'm on the line with, and where are you calling in from? How's it going, Kyle? It's Jake Piscola. What's up, man? How you doing? I can't complain, man. I woke up this morning. It's a blessing. How are you today, Kyle? <laughs> I'm doing amazing, man. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, Wednesdays, it's an interesting day because I have the SEC teleconference. Well, this morning I woke up at 420 and yeah, I know 420, but I go and work out. Every single, yeah, just right? yeah, everybody's going to get fired up in the comment box, but I go and I work. I, I put myself, I, I'm in this men's group and we went to Tuscaloosa County High School and uh, ran two miles, uh, did uh, two, 200 pull-ups, 200 squats, uh, 200 push-ups, and then another mile. Um, so I get all that workout in the morning and then I have the SEC teleconference at Wednesday. So that workout, it, it, and it has a, a spiritual message at the end. And what that does is that energy level gets me all the way to right here. Cause Wednesdays are a really busy day for me. So I appreciate you asking about me, man, but, uh, what's on your mind, man? Let, let's go through this list real quick, man. Is Alabama better than Arkansas by two touchdowns? Yes. Just without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, I, without without I I'm gonna tell you, Kyle. I I also I feel like if Alabama can put 
the running game from from the Mississippi State game mm-hmm. and the passing game from the Texas A&M game, if they can put those together. Yeah, I I, I agree. I agree with what you said. We're gonna we 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 we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna win that this year. Yeah. Okay. I, no, no, no doubts about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and I like because Andrew, who led off the show, I was like, "Who's the number one team?" And he's like, "As of today, Alabama." I respect that. I mean, honestly, the way that they say, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're number one right now, but they're a lot better than eleven. But that's fine. Like, let them lay in the weeds and let yeah. that kind of be the rat poison, the reverse rat poison for those guys, right? Um, okay, so uh, who's the MVP so far? I, I mean. I said it was Dallas Turner. He's my number one player right now. Um, what about you? Who do you think is kind of the the number one on this team? Um, I had to say Will Riker. I I, I want to give it to. I want to give it to Will Riker. And I want to give it to Jermaine Brayton because you know Alabama is known for, Alabama known for their wide receivers, and I feel like I feel like as from the Texas a and game on for it. I feel like Jermaine Burton is going to just show out, in my opinion. All right, so let me read off some stats real quick from, from Will Riker because people are calling him for the Heisman Trophy, right? Low key. I mean, the guy's coming in, he punts. So Agreed. This season, he's 12 of 12, 18 of 18 on PATs. He's hit 25 field goals in a row, one for one from 20, five of five from 30 to 39, five of five from 40 to 49, one from one 50 yards out. Dude comes in and punts for James Burnup, and he has four punts for 165 yards. Now, Andrew from Dugsville was asking earlier about uh, Chris Broswell and the season that he's put together is pretty amazing. He only has 16 tackles, which is interesting, and I don't know if you guys caught that video, but he's six foot four, 255 pounds, and he was clocked out of a top speed of 21.9 miles per hour, which is just I insane, right? Okay, so he has four and a half insane. sacks, so two behind Dallas Turner. He has three quarterback pressures. He has a pick six. He blocked a uh, kick, which should have been a touchdown. Um, he has a forced fumble, and uh, his overall grade on pro football focus is 82.7, so there's your uh, your detail for Chris Broswell, and then Jermaine Burton, 17 receptions for 386 yards. 196 of those yards came against Texas A&M. So, okay, I like your MVP picks there. Okay, on with Jay from Pensacola. Jay, who are we sleeping on? Who's not getting enough kind of attention right now when we talk about the Alabama Crimson side? I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna go too. I'm gonna go Malik Bisson. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna ask to go through. I'm gonna go Malik Benson. I'm gonna go Kobe Prince. I'm gonna get Jermaine Brooks. I feel like those. those I know Isaiah Bunn and mm. Jermaine Burton is our main two receivers. I agree. But those three, those other three, I mm-hmm. feel like if we can put all five of those together, mm-hmm. I feel like it's a wrap. It's a wrap for everybody. Yeah, those are ride outs. I mean, look, uh, Isaiah Bond's a ride out. And I think it's probably, I mean, I'm probably answering my own question right here, but it, it might be Isaiah Bond. It's just like about him getting yeah, the football, I, right. right? And, and um, he will get his the, the football in time. And I think, it, oh, Amari Nyblock's a nice one too. Um, but yeah, some exactly. of those guys in it. And it might just kind of be because the passing game is evolving. And uh, Isaiah Bond did really well uh, against um, Texas A&M. Okay, number four, um, who is your number one in college football right now? Is it Michigan? Is it Georgia? Is it Ohio State? Is it Florida State? Is it Oklahoma? Who you got? I'm not going to lie to you, Cal. Um, after watching, I feel like I put Georgia and us in the same boat. Mm. I, I I saw I saw both of the uh, Georgia and Auburn game, mm-hmm. and I saw the Georgia mm-hmm. and and Kentucky game. Mm. Uh, the um their quarterback is he he I feel like he's getting it together as a freshman, and I feel like Jalen Miro is getting it together. So mm-hmm. From my pick, to long story short, I feel like Georgia is number one right now, and I feel like they're coming along. The same way we're coming along. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we got uh, Georgia right now for Jay. And, I, and that's, I mean, that's fine. Plus, they keep winning. I mean, that's fine. I mean, they, they went down to right. Jordan here. It was tough for them until Brock Bowers uh, blew up in the fourth quarter. Um, but, you know, they keep winning. Uh, okay. So, question number five, Jay. This, we got our, our last question for you. Uh, toughest remaining game is it Arkansas? Is it Tennessee? Is it LSU um, after that open week? Is it on the road in Lexington against Kentucky? Is it on the road at Jordan Hare against Auburn? LSU, hands down. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not. 
I mean, of course, the other game, I'm not, I'm not taking any other team lightly. I'm not taking none of them lightly. That's that's all right, poison. But that Jaden Daniels is a problem. In my opinion, I feel I feel the same way about um about KJ Jefferson. Mm-hmm. I feel like yep. we need to we need to plan for the quarterback run. Mm-hmm. A quarterback run can hurt us. Mm-hmm. We can we, we can we can stop all the running backs how we want to, mm-hmm. but that quarterback run can hurt us dearly. Mm-hmm. We 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 need to game plan for that as well. But I I just feel like Jake. If we can stop Jaden Daniels in the LSU game, I feel like we, oh, we, we're we going to see Georgia, in my opinion. We're going to see Georgia. And yeah, down. yep, yep. Yeah, the, the LSU is my pick. All right, Jay. Well, I appreciate you always calling in. Thanks for the support, man. Be safe on the road, man, and we'll catch up with you soon. I have one more thing, Kyle. I'm actually coming to the game. Oh, Saturday. good. Okay. So yeah. I hope I get a chance to see you. Or something. Yeah, I am. Um, the best way to find me is up in the press box. <laughs> no, so that's where I see Toby. Uh, so Toby is always posted outside of the media room. Um, I usually get there and I'm usually on the Walk of Champions at the very top of the Walk of Champions uh, right before um, the Walk of Champions happens. So I'm out there with my camera. So if you want to come say what's up, you can't miss me. Um, I look the same. So uh, come up, say what's up. A lot of people do. And uh, it's always good to rap with a lot of people out there. So, yeah, uh, Walk of Champions uh, right by the Nick Nick Saban statue. That's where you can find me uh, right before the game. All right, man. I appreciate cool. you, man. Have a good night. Roll Tide. All right. Roll Tide to you, man. Take it easy. It's Jay and Pensacola coming up to beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Alabama and Arkansas this Saturday, October 14th. The time is 11 a.m. TV ESPN. Alabama favored by 19. I got an email today that uh, I don't think people were expecting that game to be at 11. So they have a the homecoming parade. It's at uh, 7 a.m. So that's what time the, the parade is going to be uh, rolling through downtown. And, uh, you know, that'll be interesting to kind of see the turnout for that. Okay, so uh, moving along, we got um, a 205, a 334, a 256, and an 832 inside the call queue. We go to a 205. Let's do it right now. Hey, good evening. You're on line with Kyle What's Henderson. Up, How, who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? You know who it is? It's Tommy from Leeds, Alabama, dog. What's up, Tommy? I appreciate you calling in, man, from Leeds, home of uh, the world-famous Toby, man. That's where my boy lives. Yes, sir. I, I, I just hung out with him Saturday, man. He, I, I was hoping it would be like I thought it would be, the game that blows him out, but I take a W anyway. I can get it, brother. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, 100%. Um, 100%. And look. About the Bama and Arkansas game, are mm-hmm. we – are we uh, favored by two touchdowns? Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna put more than two touchdowns up on them. Mm-hmm. We're gonna put forty up on them. Mm-hmm. But go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, I was just day. I was just gonna ask that. I mean, it's kind of leading off with this Arkansas game because I see that the line is um, nineteen and Alabama covered against Mississippi State. Um, they were able to squeeze it out against Texas A and M, and they covered against Ole Miss. So this would be potentially the fourth consecutive game that Alabama covers. Nineteen is a lot of points um, for a team that has a really good quarterback coming back. Uh, I was surprised to hear that uh, their running back only has ninety one yards. Uh, this season so far but the reason i i do think about arkansas is just because of their coach uh sam Pittman, and i know that coach saban tried to hire him before he got the head coaching position at arkansas and just listening to him speak you know i mean he he sounds like um he sounds like a great coach and kind of a player's coach but whatever so okay so we got that out of the way looks like everybody's rolling with bama big over arkansas what about um who's your mvp thus far through the first six games of the season you know, I've been, you know, I, I said Kool Aid this past week mm-hmm. and I was wrong. And <laughs> so, uh, uh, the whole season, is it what you saw, my cow? Just so far, yeah, through the first six games. Because we, it, it's, it's felt like this season, am I wrong on this? This season felt like it was like one season already and we're in a different season. Yeah. Like those, those first three games. Yeah. Man, those are some rough times. <laughs> and now yeah, it's course. a completely different um, team. It's a completely different mood. Uh, you know, people are starting I've to got, talk about got, Alabama again. It's, it feels like a long time ago. I've got – I have three, actually, MVP players. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Kool-Aid, okay. Terry on Arnold, oh. and Caleb Downs. Yep. And Caleb Downs got me a pick Saturday. I told everybody he was going to. 
So check this out. So Caleb uh, Downs, yeah, Ch- Caleb Downs, just a freshman. Check these stats out, okay? Forty-seven tackles on the season. Uh, next in line is mm. thirty-four. So Caleb Downs is leading the team in tackles as just a freshman. I know people are like, you don't want your safety to be leading the team in tackles. It's okay. I mean, he's out there doing his thing. Um, Saban told ESPN's Chris Lowe that he might be the best freshman that he's ever had here. He has two interceptions, two timely, timely interceptions. Um, he has one pass breakup in his coverage grade for just being a freshman, considering he went up against Texas, Texas A&M, and Lane Kiffin is 85.4, which is outstanding. And he's already earned um, some freshman of the week national honors. So as a freshman, kid is completely balling out. This guy has been everything we expected him to be and more. Um, and then Taron Arnold uh, playing opposite of Kool-Aid. He has 32 tackles, one interception, six pass breakups. His pro football focus grade and coverage is 78.8. And he's one player that has really increased his draft stock, in my opinion. So um, I appreciate you mentioning those players from the secondary. Okay, who are we sleeping on from this team? Sleeping on, like, receiver-wise? Or Just like backs, like, or anybody, like or? anybody. Like who, like, it could, maybe it's a coach. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, who are we sleeping on? Oh, uh, well, the one you want to be, you wouldn't want to be sleeping on, that's Jermaine Burton, man. Mm. Oh, kid's a monster. Yeah. He's come out to play. Like, Saturday, he came out and balled out, man. I didn't expect that, man. But the one you're really sleeping on is that Tim Keenan kid that's just tearing it up right now. Tim Keenan, yeah, and and thank you for bringing up Tim Keenan. I've been kind of talking about him the last couple weeks because I noticed against uh, Ole Miss, that's kind of when things, I started to really start to watch him. He was chasing down the quarterback. He was everywhere, Um, and he had eight tackles, which actually led the team against Texas A&M, believe it or not. So Tim Keenan is big. Uh, he's imposing and he moves a lot better than you would think for his sp- for his size. And he's another player like Jaheim Otis that has really worked on his body type. And I, I don't know, call me crazy right now, but I think Tim Keenan is probably performing at a higher level than Jaheim Otis. But that's just my opinion. But um, I appreciate you bringing up Tim Keenan's name. Okay, so who is your number one in college football right now? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I know I think I might sound dumb saying this, but I think Alabama deserves the number one spot mm-hmm. if they if they if they went out and played Georgia for the SEC championship. But as of today, like as of today, is it your team? Is it your number one? Because that's what An- from Andrew from Douglasville was like. Look, as of today, my yeah. number one team is Alabama. Do you feel the same way? Like Alabama is your number one team? Oh, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Yeah. I mean, if Bama starts gelling. On offense, it's gonna be hard to beat them. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. if I mean because the that defense is only going to get better. The defense isn't going to get worse. Um, so if that and, and the offense is moving on upward, so that's what I'm saying. It's like if this Alabama offense catches up and Jalen Miller continues to do his thing, the, the the guy is continuing just to trend upward. And uh, man, it's just it's been quite. The, the six games so far to see that offense from week one to where we are now. And, there, and we're not done. It's not a finished product. It's not going to be finished by the end of Arkansas or against Tennessee. It's going to be something that evolves by the end of the season. And, you know, hopefully by that point, they're playing at the highest level. Okay, uh, my fifth question for you. Toughest remaining game for Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU on the road at Kentucky or on the road at Auburn. What you got? Ooh, I would say LSU. Mm. <laughs> You know we want to get our back, get back from last year. Yep. What they done to us in Baton Rouge. So yeah, that would be my um, uh, that would be my final one. <laughs> you know, I would say LSU. Yep. Okay. Um. All right, Tommy. So uh, anything else, man? Before I move to my next caller. Uh man. Uh, I will be there Saturday cheering on the Crimson Tide. I'm coming there at eleven o'clock kickoff. I hope we just blow them cats out, man. All right, Tommy. Well, I appreciate you, uh, you you calling in, man. Roll Tide to you, man. And next time you see Toby, tell him what's up. I will, brother. All right, man. You have a good night. See you, Tommy. See you. All right, Tommy uh, calling in. Um, okay, uh, Toby, uh, my buddy has just texted me. Uh, his, his five real quick. So I'm going to read these out before I move to my next caller. Call in line is open, 205-850-1994. We got... 
uh, a three three four, a two five six, an eight three two, and a seven eight six just joined. Okay, so these are Toby's one through five. So number one, Bama is much better than Arkansas by two touchdowns. So Toby's taking the the way over on the points. Um, his MVP thus far is Jalen Milrow, uh, and he has Jermaine Burton. Uh, so Jalen Milrow on the season, he his it, what's amazing about Jalen Milrow is his pro football focus grade is 88.6, which leads the entire offense. He threw for 321 yards against Texas A&M. This is the most amazing thing about Jalen Milrow. He's 17 of 25, passing for seven touchdowns in passes that are 20 yards plus downfield. His pro football focus grade for his deep ball is... The grade is 99.1, only second in the country to Jaden Daniels of LSU. He has 1,298 yards with nine touchdowns and four interceptions on the season. Um, Toby, who are we sleeping on? Toby says we are sleeping on um, Malik Benson, which I think I would agree with that. I think you just got to get Malik Benson the football, but um, he's kind of one of those guys that we were hoping to get the football to more, and maybe that will come later on, but absolutely. And then um, Toby's number one right now. He has Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, and um, and then for his fifth, the toughest remaining game, Toby says none of them. So <laughs> Toby's rolling, and uh, so are we. We're rolling to the next call. Appreciate the text in, Toby, and uh, we move right now to our 3-3-4. Hey, good evening. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with, and where are you calling in from? Man, it's Daniel from Kalira. Hey, what's up, Coach? How you doing, man? I appreciate you calling back. Um, I know last time we got like disconnected, our phone line wasn't that uh, tight. But um, thanks for yeah. calling back to the show, man. Uh, welcome, welcome on in. And you, you, uh, you buying this that Alabama is two, three touchdowns better than Arkansas? Uh, for me, I'm gonna I'm a back back up some because y'all been talking about Tim Keenan. Mm-hmm. Well, I used to be the head football coach at Winona High School mm-hmm. about three years ago. Tim Keenan played at Rams, and that's when I rivalry game. Yep. Again. Yep. And I was telling people, I was like, this kid is a monster. We couldn't block him to save our life. <laughs> He's like 6'4", like 330 at the time in high school. <laughs> and he was quick and fast. <laughs> so to hear people talk about Tim Keenan now, it made me feel so good. I'm like, okay. Now everybody see what I had to go through when I was the head football coach at Winona High School when we were trying to block that, that big summer gun. <laughs> he was a low back then. He's like, I mean, low now. So, yeah, I had to make sure I let everybody know that because I used to be the head football coach at Winona. Wait, so, three, Coach, I, I, I remember b- before when uh, when we were we, – there was an interview that we got uh, with Tim Keenan when he was at Ramsey. And I don't know who he yeah. played. I don't think it was you guys, but somebody else. And, and Tim was much bigger. Uh, he weighed much more. But he was, yeah. he was so dominant. And <clears throat> well, I remember we yeah. asked him, what's your best thing about uh, – about playing defense and uh, Tim Keenan at the time, I'm I'm not I'm not exaggerating. He's like two three hundred and fifty pounds. He was like honestly landing yeah. on someone and hearing them groan. So that that's what he said. Like yeah. the dude is he was a he's monster. A, he was a monster, hundred percent. So, um, anyways, that, thanks for adding that because Tim Keenan playing through the roof. Yeah. The guy has a motor. Um, yeah. and man, I mean, just an elite athlete, hundred percent. All right. So, uh, with that said, yeah. Coach, w- what what else you got? Oh. Yeah, but the Arkansas game, you said about the buying it. For me right now, Alabama's still like a box of chocolates. I said it last week. You never know what you're going to get when you stick your head in the drawer. We can all see this. Alabama beat Texas a and They're going to come out and beat Arkansas by 20 points. Man, we'll be in the old Donnie Brook in the fourth quarter, score 13-17. Mm-hmm. So you can never tell with this team with Alabama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Miro threw 300 yards, but he's been inconsistent all season. Mm-hmm. The defense is kind of empty sometimes. If I all defense elite, yeah, at spots they are really, really good. Mm-hmm. But they have a time where they'll fall asleep. Like, like I done at least three jobs in that Texas and m game. Mm-hmm. The defense fell asleep. It's like Texas and m is walking down the field on them. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden they'll just wake up out of nowhere. So I, to me, I want to see the team practice more on keeping their drive and their intensity level up mm-hmm. and play a complete game. Mm-hmm. Like Coach Tatum been saying, he on the same yeah. stuff I'm on. Cause we've been coaching ball forever. Mm-hmm. That's the hardest thing to do is to keep a team motivated to win, mm-hmm. where everybody else around them pat them on their back. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. No, you got to be consistent. Yep. And that's why I think it's kind of it's been great for Coach Saban to finally have a team that isn't 
one or two right now because he's been able to really coach these guys up and and you know as a coach yeah. it's much better when your team is laying yeah. in the weeds than it is with the target on their back right yeah. those are two different teams that you have Absolutely. to coach right because i mean just like mm -hmm. coach saban said tonight during his press conference everybody's reading their phone the, the players yeah they say they're blocking out the noise they're they're reading the same stuff that we're mm -hmm. seeing right or we're producing so yeah, you know but but seeing that they're 11 they're like oh yeah we're 11 all right we'll, we'll show you guys on saturday so having them mm -hmm. kind of laid back i think it is better for a, a team of this caliber okay with that said coach yeah. who is your mvp so far through six games Offense. My offensive MVP, I'm going to still say Jalen Milrow. Because mm -hmm. I mean, everybody was doubting him before the season started. Mm -hmm. So he can't throw. Sip the best. Boucher the best. He throw too many picks. So I'm going to say Milrow. And what? Uh, and what said, mm -hmm. I'm going to say Tim Keenan. Mm -hmm. Tim Keenan is a hog. See, everybody else, they get so caught up with all the fancy stuff in the secondary, yeah. the pretty <laughs> linebackers, the built defensive ends, the, the football team stars on the interior. And look at the offensive line, you can tell. From the offensive line, the guard, center, and guard, they are killing Alabama right now. Mm -hmm. they, on defense, was helping Alabama, that three technique and that one technique, that Tim Kenny, I think Tim Smith. But I'm going to go with Tim Kenny because a guy that be 330 pounds, that six four, that mood way move. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a tie. Tim Smith and, and Tim uh, and, and uh, Tim Keenan are my MVPs in defense. All right, I, I like uh, I like with you going the the defensive trenches, Coach. Um, okay, who who are we sleeping on? Not talking enough about uh, right now as we enter this next game against Arkansas. Tim Keenan. <laughs> he's been a dog. Tim Keenan has been a dog. I mean, he he's not getting no talk about on ESPN or no one. Uh -huh. That that kid is playing like Quentin Williams. They used to play at Winona High School before before I got there. Uh -huh. He's playing just like him, and nobody hasn't said a word. Yep. That yeah. kid is a monster. He's unblockable. He plays with a high motor. He got good hands. His feet quick. He explode. But that uh, initial explosion he do. I seen guards tell him to go snap back. That's a dog. He make linebackers play better. He make defensive ends and I get double team. That's Tim King. Who is your number one right now in college football, coach? Um, as an Alabama fan, I'm going to say Alabama. But mm -hmm. if, a, if a realist, I got to say Michigan. Even though Michigan mm -hmm. haven't played anybody yet, you still see signs of a team that can give you pure hell fit. Mm -hmm. Their defense look tough. They're good in the trenches. Secondary guys don't get beat all the time. Mm -hmm. Don't have guys running wide open. And they run the football. Mm -hmm. They got two-headed yep. running back mm -hmm. that will get anybody fit later on. Mm -hmm. So I got to say Michigan is number one. But as an Alabama fan, I'm going to say Alabama because I'm hoping you speak it into existence, it's going to happen. So I'm going to say Alabama because right now, by look at Alabama right now and watch them before they play Auburn. They look like a totally different team. Mm -hmm. And the thing about uh, Michigan, too, is, I mean, it they're, just their schedule hasn't been, you know, that high of caliber, but they're still yeah, not they're allowing not. teams to score. So, I mean, they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. It's they're just, you know, I, I, I guess we'll just have to wait till they see, uh, play uh, Penn State or, Mich or Ohio State here later on. Okay, uh, yeah. last question I got yeah. for you, Coach. Uh, toughest remaining game on Alabama's schedule. Um, I know it's always the next game, but, you know, this is a show. It's an entertainment. So is it Arkansas, yeah. Tennessee, yeah. LSU, <laughs> Kentucky, or Auburn? Okay, the cliche is the next game, like you just said. Mm -hmm. But real, this is the Iron Bowl. Man, I'm playing the Iron Bowl several times. I don't care what your record is. I don't care how bad yep. Auburn is. Mm -hmm. Playing at Auburn at nighttime in Jordan Harrell, Auburn players automatically get a 20-plus boost on all their tributes. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, <laughs> a quarterback going to play like I the know. Heisman contender. I know. If, if, the old, if the offensive line don't get their – they they they, they silent count stuff together. We can find ourselves in a dog fight against Auburn the last game of the season. All right, Coach. Uh, anything else before I move to my next caller? Oh yes, man. Like I tell anybody, I was talking to one of my buddies today about the game. I was like, the take in them game. Bama still shows signs of a team that still ain't quite there yet. Cause you see all those mistakes they had. Mm -hmm. When they win, they had fourteen pillars. One time they had three straight pillars back mm -hmm. to back. I'm mm -hmm. like. That's an undisciplined team. Mm -hmm. You got to punish those kids for that. 
But again, we still know Bama's a young football team. They are trying to find their way. I said, people, be patient with the team. The ups and the downs. Mm-hmm. Come, come Auburn game, Bama's going like a totally different team. Yep. And Georgia's going to have hell in their hands in the SEC championship game. Yep. Coach, well, I appreciate you calling in again. Thanks for the, the insight, and thanks for hyping up our boy Tim Keenan, man. Uh, call in again and call in any time, all right? All right, Tim, All right, man. See you, Coach. All right, we got a uh, 256, an 832, and a 786 inside uh, the call queue. Kyle Henderson of Bamboo Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys uh, joining me tonight on this beautiful Wednesday, October 11th. You can watch Coach Saban's press conference in its entirety um, back on our YouTube channel tonight. He talked about uh, the solar eclipse, which is going to happen Saturday. Isn't that crazy? There's, there's literally going to be an eclipse during the game. Like, I mean, what are the chances of that? This is actually the second time that Coach Saban has been asked about an eclipse. The last time was when I first moved here. And you can look it up on YouTube. It was, it was honestly such a funny clip because the eclipse, this type of eclipse was the one. I mean, you can't look a bit up at any eclipse but this one was like really dangerous if you like went out and just like looked up at it so they asked coach Saban about the eclipse and he said that he was like well you can go to the weather channel because that's coach Saban's like main thing is the weather channel and he's like you can see what the what the eclipse is going to look at at every single hour (laughs) and then he said that I guess they made like the glasses for the team to go out. So if the players were practicing and they wanted to stop practicing real quick and like look up at the sky, they could. So I thought that was hilarious. Um, he spoke about Tim Keenan. He talked about the left tackles and uh, he ta- talked about uh, Malachi Moore. By the way, uh, Malachi Moore will be a game time decision along with James Burnup on Saturday. And it looks like um, Jacory Brooks was able to practice this week. So, um, if Malachi Moore can't go, then you have Taron Arnold, who will be at star, and then you have Trey Amos, who will be at corner. And then if James Burnup can't go, who's the team's punter, you have Will Riker. And someone asked in our community tab, they were like, I thought that Will Riker was the punter and the kicker, and that Burnup was coming in on like garbage time. Those are two different positions. So you have um, you know, your, your kicker, who kicks field goals, and kickoffs and then you have your punter who punts so and actually this year the the punter actually holds so it's james burnup holder which is pretty significant if who would be the backup holder maybe it'd be ty simpson I, i'm not sure okay we go back to the phone lines it's 256 we start right now hey good evening you're online with kyle henderson who i'm on the line with and where are you calling in from hey this is greg from athens hey greg Alabama. thanks for uh, joining us tonight i appreciate you calling in welcome to the show Thank you. I really enjoy your show on Roll Tide. Yeah, Roll Tide to you, man. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to start out by saying it was a great win uh, Saturday. I think we're improving. Um, we still got a long way to go on the penalties. If we can ever just get the penalties, just get the penalties um, rectified, I think we're going to be much better. But I don't know about you, Kyle, but every time we score a touchdown, I cringe. I'm always waiting for a flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this season there has been, what is it, six touchdowns that have been taken away? You have two yeah. for Jermaine Burton. Yeah. You have Taryn Arnold's kickoff return. You have the blocked punt yep. or the blocked field goal. Um, and then a couple others. Yep. And, and crucial, uh, you know, touchdowns. I mean, that one against Texas A&M, man, that was, that was a huge play because Alabama only got a field goal out of oh, that. Gosh. And, um, I mean, I had that score 31 to 17 or whatever. It would have been pretty dang close uh, if that, yep. that score would have came through. But um, luckily Alabama was able to, you know, kind of put it together and control that second half of the game. But, um, yeah, they've had six touchdowns, which is crazy. Um, so is is Bama? You um, you kind of agree with everybody else that Bama? I, I know the line is nineteen. That's the rat poison for Alabama. But collectively, do you think this team puts together four quarters and dominates the Hogs? Yeah, I, I really do. I, I I feel like we'll win by more than two touchdowns. Um, this is the only team uh, besides maybe the Central Florida team, whatever. I felt confident for sure because their offensive line is really having a lot of struggles. And our defensive line is getting better and better and better every week. So I think that's going to be a huge, huge part of the game. I think we're going to control the line of scrimmage. And I, and I really feel like on offense, we'll still, you know, we'll probably still maybe only score 
you know, maybe 27. We might be lucky and get 30, but if we can keep our penalties down, we might get a little more. But I think we're honestly going to hold them to around 10 to 14. They're having a hard time moving the ball. They don't really have any weapons. Their best, mm-hmm. you know, Rockets hurt their best running back. He hasn't done anything. So as long as we don't fall asleep on defense and we play like we've been playing, I really feel like we're going to really shut them down. I just, you know, just depend on what we can do on offense. Hopefully we can run maybe a mm-hmm. little bit on them. And I really think we're a passing team. I know everybody thinks we're going to be a running team, but I really think we're honestly our best weapons are our wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And Jalen's deep ball, I'd say let's throw it and maybe – I mean, I know we want to run the ball, but um, <laughs> I still think we should throw it 30 times a game. Mm-hmm. I mean, you uh, you had Jalen throw it over 30 times this last game. I just think the, the great thing was yep. – we're on with uh, Greg from Athens – is the fact that Texas A&M literally – challenged Jalen Milrow to beat them over top and he did that Mm -hmm. and we know that this team can run the football I mean I get it last last week Texas A&M a lot of it was the play design to stop Alabama and force them to run um with that said there was some execution errors and Alabama should have been able to run the ball a little bit better than what they did um but if they become a balanced team and and probably more throw than run uh they have the wide receivers for sure they certainly do the wide receivers this year better than the wide receivers collectively last year so I agree with you on that and just like some of our other uh, callers have said, if you get the ball to Malik Benson or Mari Nyblack or uh, Kendrick Law, by the way, he looked good returning kicks. Um, I really like that. He runs really hard. Yeah. Uh, Kobe Prentice has been, you know, um, a really good slot. So there's a ton of guys to get the ball to. So maybe, as Coach Saban said, it will continue to evolve. Um, who's your MVP so far through six games of the season? Well, I want to say this. The only consistent player honestly that's been really at a high level is will Riker. he's kept us what some of the scoring that we've had we've had to depend on the field goal mm-hmm. and the extra points mm-hmm. um of course i love dallas turner i mean there's all these other things but honestly he's been those you know sometimes he's getting almost 12 points a game <laughs> yeah. um, or more <laughs> <laughs> so that's usually about half of what we score. <laughs> we've had to have him, and he's hit. Um, we've had to have him. Then we had to have him uh, as a punter. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how many reps he gets a day, but I bet he don't get that many. He averaged over forty yards a punt. So yeah, I mean, he's it's uh, weird to say, but I thought dur- he's scoring. The, he's the scoring started, nine. Your offense was, nine points a game. Yeah, this season <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I mean. What are we averaging a game? 24, 25 points a game if we're lucky? <laughs> yeah. So he's almost got half of it by mm-hmm. himself. So, um, I, I, and that's, that's crazy to say, but our offense just, we don't we haven't scored a lot of points. Mm-hmm. For a field goal kicker, if, I think if he had been, had a really bad off year, I mean, we might, we might have lost Saturday and we could have lost the Ole Miss game. So, I really feel like, unbelievably, after all the other great players that we have, I really feel like our kicker is our most valuable player so so far. Well, he could be the all time. We might get better on offense, and that might change. Well, he could be the become the all time leading scorer in college football history here in the next couple games, yeah. which is like yeah. mind mind boggling, right? And like when you look at the leading scorer, even at Alabama, you might think like a Bryce Young or Tua. Um, mm-hmm. Nope, up at the top is Will Reichard. And, yeah, he, does, yeah. he just doesn't miss. He doesn't miss. 25, doesn't miss. 25 in a row. And look, it's a long season. A lot can happen. Um, but, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, these are the facts. And the guy is ice cold, and you're right. I mean, he's been money in crunch time. Okay, um, from this team collectively, who are we not talking about? Who are we sleeping on? Um, who do you feel needs more notoriety? Or who is a player that you feel might have a – might step up in the next six games. I, I I think it's going to be number 47, James Smith. I've seen him get in a couple games, and he really gets a push. Or, or I mean, he just makes things happen. I think it could be James Smith. And, of course, we're waiting for, um, you know, Haynes, if he ever gets to play. And I'm hearing – I keep hearing more and more people think he's going to get some, some carries this week. Mm-hmm. So – those would be my two. And we're not sleeping on Haynes. Everybody's up, almost in an uproar. I really feel like he's better than than Rodale. I'm I'm sorry. I mean, he's a pretty good, tough little runner, mm-hmm. but 
I think if Haynes ever gets the ball and gets going, uh, there's, his days are numbered. I mean, he's going to get. He's going to be the number two running back. Him and Jace are going to do it. And I think that's coming soon. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of people are, you know, we have someone inside the comment box that just said free justice. Um, <clears throat> and look, yeah, you're right, because I, th- I don't like Chase and Roy Dell, each of those guys have been healthy and they've been able just to do what has been needed to do. Um, but I think justice might have that extra playmaking ability factor that, you know, that's why people want him on the field. He hasn't gotten opportunities. Exactly. Those opportunities hopefully will come for him at the right time. We've seen it happen before when guys are patient and they continue to stay at it and they get on the field. Um, I, I have no idea, you know, what his mindset is, but the best advice would be just to stay patient, right? Because you're just one play away, two plays away from getting significant time within that running back room. We've seen it happen almost every year. I mean, Alabama just rotates in these running yeah. backs and it's a gauntlet of a season and, you know, who knows? I mean, there could be a time where you need him to step up. And uh, the run that he had against Mississippi State where he got the ball and he kind of put his hand on the ground and kept on going, like mm-hmm. that's the type of player. He scored yeah. three touchdowns during the spring game. Guy's a complete baller. Okay, um, you're number one uh, right now in college football. Is it Georgia? Is it Michigan? Is it Ohio State? Is it Florida State? Is it somebody else? Uh, you left off the – You left. I mean, of course I think we will have a good shot uh-huh. unless we keep improving because – I don't think anybody else has a higher ceiling than we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're the youngest team out of all yes. these teams, too, mm-hmm. also. We mm-hmm. starters. So, so uh, you know, I'm going to put that because I'm a homer. But I'm going to tell you, the, the team that's got the best win beat the team that did have the best win. I'm going to say Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma should be number one because mm-hmm. Texas, I thought, had the best win beating us at home. Mm-hmm. And they played them in Dallas. A 50-50 crowd, and yeah. they beat them. So, to me, I think Oklahoma has should be number one. You're the first caller to say that, and I, I do like that call. I mean, the quarterback is outstanding. Dylan Gabriel is a baller. And oh, yeah. then in that first game, I'm, I'm sure you guys watched it too, Texas had so many turnovers, and it was one of those rivalry games, just like Alabama's about to play mm-hmm. in the later of the season against Auburn. Now, Oklahoma's a lot better than Auburn, but – you know, like the 50 oh, yeah. 50 crowd, like there was just a lot of weird things going on. Tip balls were coming up, players were catching, like it was just one yep. of those environments. Um, and hopefully, we get to see Oklahoma and Texas play again. Um, and that's yeah. going to impact Alabama because Alabama lost to Texas head to head. So, uh, you need to continue to see, um, you know, kind of what transpires with that. And that's why it's if you're an Alabama fan, you're hoping that Georgia almost wins out and that Alabama beats Georgia because that will. Right. cement Alabama into the playoffs 100%. You beat an undefeated Georgia team that hasn't lost in however many games, you're in the playoffs 100%. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, toughest remaining game on Alabama's schedule, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, uh, trip to Kentucky at Auburn. What you think? Well, um, the only thing it really can – there's, there's two games, actually. The LSU game, can we score enough points? Mm-hmm. But I really don't know. LSU's not going to score 40 on us. And I don't know if they'll score 30 on us. Mm-hmm. I do feel like we can – if we our running game gets a little bit better, and we are, like you said, trying to get a little more bounce, but we're still throwing the ball, I think we'll score 40 on them. So I think – and we have a week off to prepare, hopefully come up with a good game plan against Daniels. That'll help. But that Auburn game, man, you know how weird it is. It's always – it's always crazy. It's – they throw the kitchen sink at us. <laughs> There's crazy things happen down there. I hope it's not a night game. And, you know, we'll have – if we keep winning, that'll be their Super Bowl. It'll be them putting us out of, you know, of, of potentially getting to the Final Four. Yeah, they have a so one-game I'm Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a one-game Super yeah. Bowl every single year. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, well, thanks so much for calling in. I appreciate you. Please call again next time. And uh, I appreciate the call from Athens, Alabama. All right, thank you, Real Tide. All right, Real Tide to you. That was uh, Greg in Athens, Alabama. We got 832, a 786, and a 205 inside the call queue. Um, Ebram Davis says, uh, who will win the Super Bowl, Tua or Jalen? I'm saying uh, Brock Purdy in the 49ers. They, they'll, uh, they'll take down the Dolphins, right? Yo, the Niners offense is straight fire. I mean, the way that they handle business against the Cowboys, I know the Cowboys are struggling or whatever, but still. Um, that offense, man. But can you imagine Tua and Jalen? 
Man, the Eagles are so good. And Tua dropped, what, 70 a couple weeks ago? Man, all those guys balling out. Um, love to see it. Okay, back to the call in line, uh, 832. Let's get it. Hey, how's it going? You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Thanks for being patient. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? This is Mike from Austin, Texas. What's up, Mike? I appreciate you calling in, man. Um, lots to dive into. Alabama now 5-1 and one on the season. Takes on Arkansas this Saturday, favored by 19. Kickoff at 11 a.m. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you, man. Thank you. I just want to say, first of all, you know, here in Austin, these Longhorn fans were brought down to earth a little bit with that <laughs> loss they took at OU, which I'm happy about that, to be honest with you. Uh, another thing I want to say, man, is we got three Big Ten teams in the top five. Mm -hmm. How in the world is that possible? I mean, out, out of their, their hardest, at the, between them three teams, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State, their hardest two out-of-conference games have been Notre Dame and West Virginia. That's the hardest two out-of-conference games they played. So how in the world these three top teams in the top five? And with that being said, two of them's going to be a shoe in the playoff because they don't play anybody except the three play each other. So two of them are probably going to go to the playoff just because of, of who they are, I guess. But that's something I'm having to wrap my, round, my brain around, too, to be honest with you. So I don't, I don't see how in the world anybody, with all due respect, could put Michigan number one, and they played absolutely nobody. I mean, yep. you take Kentucky, you take any team there is, they would have Michigan's schedule. They'd be undefeated, too. So I don't see how in the world Michigan can be anywhere near me because we don't know. I understand the potentials there, but if they ain't going to play nobody, they may, need not be ranked number two. And we see what happened last time they played a decent team in the, in the, in the playoffs last, last year. You know, so they, they got big, couldn't even beat TCU, big 12 runner-up. Mm-hmm. When but you, uh, another thing too, but just to go down, yeah, go ahead, Kyle. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I think that, you know, when you look to that Texas and Oklahoma game, and I get it, they, they might have been brought down to earth, but we count, can't discount what, they, what they've what they done. I mean, under Steve Sarkeesian, right? I, I think, like, hearing from the Texas fans and stuff like that, like, They've done a they've done a great job, and I mean this is certainly their team, and um, I would love to see Alabama and Texas play. I mean, who wouldn't love to see a rematch later on in the season, um, especially the way that Alabama's offense continues to trend upwards. And I know that Milro would love to get another shot at Texas, um, and it was good to see him go into Texas, where his family's from, and have a great showing. Everyone saw uh, Milro coming out and, and um, hugging up on his family. I thought that was a great video to watch. Um, okay, so we've we've had six games thus far. Um, I've been asking people, who's the MVP uh, through six games? It could be the offense, defense. I mean, it could be an assistant coach. It could uh, maybe it's Miss Terry. No one said Miss Terry. Um, that might be that might be the pick. <laughs> it might be Miss Terry because this. It, it, am I wrong? Like, and we've been talking about this before. It seems like the team transformed after she gave Coach Saban the green light to get after him against Mississippi State. But who's your MVP, uh, Mike? Well, I would have to say maybe I'm off the base, but maybe the, the Caleb Downs, the uh, true freshman Ooh, mm -hmm. safety, I think yep. he is. Mm -hmm. Man, the, the defensive secondary is tight, and I think mm -hmm. he's had a lot to do with the overall play of the defense and then uh, the secondary as well. He seems to be all over the place. Yeah. So I, and I think he was like an MVP of the SEC MVP. If, freshman MVP or defensive MVP one of these weeks, but I'd say Caleb Downs has de de definitely made his mark on the defense. So I'd say so far, he's my he's my MVP. Yeah, I like the pick. I mean, for a freshman to be leading the team in tackles right now and have a coverage grade of 85.4 going up against Texas, Ole Miss, and uh, Texas A&M, and those type of wide receivers speaks volumes to the play of him. Um, two timely interceptions. I mean, that interception against Texas A&M really changed the momentum of that game. Okay, so um, who is uh, who are we sleeping on, or or who do you think you know maybe this team could see more of, or um, you know, kind of in that aspect of of question number three? I would say it's Bama's running game. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I guess Chase McClenham and uh, Roy Dell Williams. I, I mm -hmm. think that for some reason, them guys. I mean, they've had some good games and they've had some good, you know, good, good uh, flashes of excellence. 
But so far, I, th- I think the running game only put up 30 yards against A&M or something like that. But any, anyway, I think them two guys and the running game overall is a sleeper a little bit. The reason why, I think any at, at any time now, they're just ready to get out. I mean, they're ready just to bust it open and take a game over. But I'd say it's our running games a little underestimated, a little underrated, because mm. I think any given time they can put up 200 yards, 100 yards each. So I'd say it's uh, them two guys right there, our running game so far. We're sleeping on a little bit. Yeah, and, and I think with that said, like people want to see Justice Haynes, including myself. Um, but I think the, the great thing is Roy Dell and Jace have been healthy. And you always want those upperclassmen running backs to be healthy and um, they're capable, uh, just like you said, to to carry this team. They were the first half of the season or the first couple of games or whatever it was. I mean, each of them hit the 100-yard mark um, when they had to. Each are, each run really hard. The thing that I really like about uh, Jace um, and Roydell, too, is they go north and south. There's no dancing in the background. They're just north and south, and they can, they mm-hmm. can make cuts, and they can get to that second level, uh, but they do a, a, a great job. Um, in between the tackles, but it's just such a difference between these two running backs. And I get it. The, the offense line is different, but remember, uh, Jameer Gibbs, like he had such an incredible burst, um, right through the tackles. I mean, that guy, I mean, top, top 10 pick in the NFL draft, um, because of that elite speed. Now these guys are, um, more imposing, um, but it's good that they're healthy and hopefully we see justice hands. Okay. Um, who is your uh, your number one in college football? Being that you're close to uh, you know kind of the the Texas Longhorns, um, you agreeing with our last caller and saying that maybe Oklahoma is the number one team. You going with Georgia, Michigan? Um, nobody's talking about Florida State. Could it be Florida State? I, I don't know. Who's your number one, Mike? Well, you know, it, it pains me to say, but it's got to be the Georgia Bulldogs mm-hmm. until they lose a game. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you can't, you can't take away what they've done these last couple of years. And, and, and this year, they, just like Bama, as the year goes on, Georgia seems to be getting a little bit better. So, uh, so I mean, and, until they actually lose a game, Georgia Bulldogs got to be number one. But with that being said, and – uh, yeah, Georgia Bulldogs has got to be number one. but And they do have a couple of tough games coming up, but I don't see anybody on their schedule is going to beat them until they play in the championship game. If that's Bama or LSU or somebody, I, I don't know. But uh, right now, until they get beat, man, it's got to be Georgia. And now they got to know what it's like to be a Bama fan going undefeated, having a great season, and teams not wanting to put them number one, you know. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's got to be Georgia. But with that being said, Kyle, it dang sure ain't the Michigan Wolverine. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So uh, I need some help inside the comment box. When? How? What's the streak up to for Georgia? How many games have they won in a row? Could somebody put that inside the comment box? I'd appreciate that. Okay. So, uh, Mike, my last question for you: toughest remaining game for Alabama is it Arkansas, is it Tennessee? LSU, the two road trips to uh, Kentucky and to Auburn. Someone in the comment box said even Chattanooga. Um, so why not? What, what, In your opinion, what's the toughest uh, opponent uh, down the stretch? Well, that's a pretty tough stretch, to be honest with you. Going through Arkansas, you know, Tennessee, LSU, and at Kentucky and at Auburn, that's a pretty tough stretch right there. But I'd say the most dangerous, either between Tennessee or LSU, because uh, uh, I would say LSU. And the reason why, mm-hmm. to beat Alabama, you got to have superstar quarterback play. And LSU, it pains me to say, they got the superstar quarterback right now. That guy, Jaden Daniels, I think yeah. his name is. When he first came on to the scene, I didn't know what to think about the guy. He transferred in from the Pac-12. He was slow to kind mm-hmm. of find his way yep. on the physicality of the SEC. Mm-hmm. But where he's at now, that guy has come a long way. And believe me, like I said, it pains me to say that. I think they, they beat, he beat Alabama last year. But with that, being, I think LSU is going to be their toughest game they're going to play. Yep. Or Tennessee. Or, or Tennessee. But uh, – but that's a tough that's a tough stretch of games. I mean, even at Kentucky, I think they'll beat Kentucky. But like that previous call seller at Auburn, I mean, yep. I've been to the Iron Bowl, that four overtime Iron Bowl. <laughs> Man, that is a rowdy, ratkus. That is a hard place to play. And as much as I hate Auburn, I hate to say, I mean, I, I don't. 
you got, they, that's a tough place to play in. That's a tough place to play going at Auburn. And you see, like, they, they tend to beat, get lucky and, or whatever and beat Bama every now and then. But I would say with that being said, LSU is going to be the toughest game just because they got a good coach and they got – Jalen Daniels, and there's a good chance that game will be for the West because LSU's not mm. out of the West. I mean, the West ain't been won yet. So, uh, but I, I'd say it's going to be the LSU game. It's going to be the toughest game. Well, I appreciate you calling in, Mike. Always appreciate your uh, call from Austin, Texas. Please call again next time, and thank you very much for the support. All right. Thank you, too, man. Bye-bye. All right, man. See you. All right. Um, yeah, so the the good news when you look at this schedule for Alabama is, you're right. Um, someone I think put it inside the the comment box. Um, oh, that's Eric D. What's up, Eric? I appreciate you. And by the way, thank you. It's 23 games consecutively that Georgia has won, but those games for Arkansas, Tennessee, and then you have an open week. Then LSU. All those games are at Brian Denny Stadium, which is great for the Crimson Tide before you go. Um, to Kentucky, and then you host Chattanooga before you go on the road against Auburn. Uh, with that said, we go back to the uh, the phone lines, and we got a 786. Hey, good evening. You're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with, and where are you calling in from? What's going on, Kyle? It's Chad from Miami. What's up, Chad? I appreciate you calling in, man. Welcome to the show. Um, you know, kind of a lot to dive into as Alabama is now 5-1. and one. People starting to talk about Alabama again. And, uh, you know, this team continues to trend upward, man. So welcome to the show. I uh, appreciate it, man. Um, uh, let's see. Number one, yes, I believe Alabama will beat Arkansas by at least two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to cut down on the turnovers and the penalties, and I think they'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, they might have a little bit of difficulty with um, uh, K.J. Jefferson because mm-hmm. he's a little bit mobile, but – we're, we're going to win that game. Um, uh, their defense is not going to be fared. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, number two, uh, MVP MVP so far. First two games was kind of uh, but after after this after um the Texas game, I think the MVP has been Dallas Turner, man. Um, he's stepped into a leadership role and he's been getting at a D line and other linebackers um um in um the uh on the sidelines during mm-hmm. the game. so um. I- He's really been like pushing a team. Um, it's either him or if not, um, you see Caleb Caleb Downs. Um, I'm also talking to guys in the secondary. I'm um, about um, uh, missing assignments. So I think I think the main person is Dallas Turner. He's really stepped into a leadership role since that second game, the, the loss to Texas. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think to uh, kind of to to build on Dallas Turner too, uh, twenty six tackles on the season, six and a half sacks, nine quarterback curries, which leads the team um, eighty eight point two uh, Pro Football Focus grade when chasing down the quarterback, which is phenomenal. Um, has six and a half sa- sacks, and, um, and and that's in the last four games. So uh, he's really turned it up. Also won the National Defensive Player. Um, of the week award so the guy is uh, I mean he's just this is the Dallas Turner that we expected and wanted him to be he's doing that right now um, who, who are we sleeping on Chad uh, it's gonna be a weird answer but I think Tommy Reese man he has to uh, he has to do a better job in getting uh, Melrose, uh, easier easier targets whether that be a tight end or a third receiver over the middle because I think that's where he's really struggling at with uh, the short passes, um, uh, whether it be Nye Black or Law, wh- whoever whoever's playing at that slot, man. Uh, Tommy Reese need to, uh, I guess, scheme them open a little bit better to get to get Melrose confidence going. Because have you? Because from what you've seen from the last few games, especially mm-hmm. um, the Texas game, mm-hmm. he struggles in the first quarter. He gets kind of shaky, and then the team kind of like puts it together in the second quarter. There sh- there should be more games where he's he gets it going right 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 in the beginning of the game instead of waiting until the second half to, to really start getting it going when you look at and um, uh, go ahead keep it go keep ahead. it keep it rolling chad keep it keep rolling no i was gonna say um um uh he's been doing a better job um especially from the from the last two games um uh i mean i'm the last the first two games where it was a lot of stacks with tight ends. Sometimes mm-hmm. you see you see two and three tight ends on the field, but um, uh, he's been u- mainly using um, um uh, two, or if not um, he'll use one 
with a uh, slot receiver. Um, but he also has to make it a little bit easier on the um, – uh, They'll develop some easier passing routes so the uh, offensive line doesn't have to block for so long because um, uh, I think I, I called in a few days ago when Jalen Miller has, has so much time. Um, uh, he doesn't have lateral quickness. He has more like north-south quickness or whatever. 100%. He takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So he needs uh, an easier target in the middle of the field to, com- to have some easy completions. Mm-hmm. When you look to uh, the the top teams in college football, I've been asking everybody. I think I got an Oklahoma vote for number one, but mostly it's been um, Georgia. Nobody wants Michigan. Nobody even uh, li- nobody even hears when I say Florida State. I'm like, is it Florida State? And aren't they ranked like fourth or something like that uh, in the AP poll? But nobody has even mentioned them. Who who do you think is your uh, top team? I'm just saying today, like October 11, 2023. So, so basically, like I told you a few days ago, man, um, uh, a lot of these teams that are ranked in the top 10, they haven't played each other yet. Like a lot of the um, uh, the Big 12, the Big 10, yep. and the uh, Pac-12 teams are going to play each other, and they're all listed in the top the top 10, and not all of them are going to be making it in the top four. So mm-hmm. I think um, Florida State is definitely a pretender. USC is a pretender because they don't play nope. defense yep. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and USC, Oregon, and Washington – they're all going to either be playing each other, going to be playing against UCLA, um, uh, Oregon State, Oregon, and Utah. So I, I believe only one team is going to be coming out of that division. Um, same thing for um, uh, the Big Big 12. I believe Texas and Oklahoma will be playing each other again in the championship yep. if either team can get past Kansas. And then the same thing in the Big 10. The Big 10, um, um, uh, I know a few of the teams are going to be playing um, such playing each other. Um, uh uh, Michigan, um, uh, Penn State, and Ohio State are going to be playing each other, but they also have to play um, Maryland and a few other somewhat contenders in their division. Um, so I believe only one team in each of those those division will be advancing to the playoffs, and then also one team in the SEC because let's be real, Georgia hasn't played anybody in the last two seasons unless, uh, uh, until they got to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So with their weak schedule, if they lose. Um, in the SEC championship game, and I'm hoping it's Alabama, they're not making to the playoffs because they haven't played anybody this mm-hmm. year. Like, they're supposed to, supposed to play Oklahoma, but somehow that game got vacated. So they haven't really played anybody besides Kentucky. Um, I believe the best team that's put together the best um, um, uh, um, uh, resume, well, not resume, but has looked well so far on offense and defense mm-hmm. and special teams is Michigan. Mm. Michigan has played the best so far. It's either Michigan, and then the second team after that is um, uh, Oklahoma. But Michigan is, is uh, the, the top team for me right now. Let's look at uh, Michigan's football schedule real quick, just to look at it. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna bring up. Just stay with me, Chad. Let's let's look up this schedule real quick, and then we'll. Uh... I'm I'm not saying. Michigan has has played the greatest schedule. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. they look the, mo- the most complete. Yeah, so far. yeah. I'm just I'm There's just kind of I'm kind of curious just to I, I've of course looked at the schedule, uh, but uh, let's let's put it up on the big board real quick. Okay. There so, was a crazy stat um 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 uh, on Fox Sport um um uh, what's his name um uh Joe Clatt former quarterback for Clatt um, Joe Clatt yeah Joe Clatt. So basically. He he said a crazy stat. Michigan, um, they're the most loaded team in college football. Mm. They dress almost eighty players every week, and then this past weekend that they played, all but one player didn't get a snap. Wow, huh? So they so they played almost eighty players this, this past weekend that, that whichever team they played. Man, their schedule has been just really light. Look at that: East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green. Rutgers, Nebraska, Minnesota. Okay, so they're going to take on um, th- these next games. Okay, Indiana, uh, Michigan State. Yeah. Um, then they're open, and then the back yeah, end. They have really so their schedule but doesn't even start until November. Right we got Purdue at Penn State at Maryland. Yeah. So they're they're so Michigan's schedule doesn't start until November. That that's basically what I learned from that. Uh, um, you're, bre- you're breaking up. I was just saying that Michigan's schedule doesn't start till uh, my birthday month, uh, which is in November. So, um, all right, Chad, uh, last question, man. Toughest game on the schedule that remains for Alabama. Is it uh, 
The next one up, is it LSU? Uh, is it who who you guys the toughest uh, remaining game for Alabama? The toughest team I believe is remaining is gonna be LSU, but Auburn is always a sneaky team, man. They play as well because you know they're they're still in state and they're also in, in the division. So they they're a sleeper team, but I believe LSU because they 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 have a quarterback. And um, I don't I don't think the LSU the only, the only person on LSU defense is probably gonna hurt us is um Perkins the the linebacker. Mm-hmm. But their defense hasn't been playing part this this season. But Jalen, their quarterback is is definitely gonna be a problem. I believe we have to at least score somewhere around. 35 to 40 points to beat LSU. Unless our defense really stepped down and, and locked him down, mm-hmm. unlike last year. And then my last point is um, uh, we need to start playing some of the players, man. Um, um, the, the new recruits or guys that, that, that's been sitting, especially due to injury, because um, um, uh, we need depth, man, um, uh, especially in our defense. I, I'm not sure if you've been paying attention, but um, uh, most of the guys that are in the defensive rotation, especially in the secondary, are mm-hmm. seniors or if not fifth year seniors. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Malachi is a senior. Jalen Key and um, Amos are fifth-year seniors. Um, uh, Terran Arnold, he, even though he's a, a redshirt sophomore, he's been playing better than Kool-Aid. And um, uh, he's eligible for the NFL draft, and I'm not sure if he might stay or not, but I, I think he should. Kool-Aid is, is going in the draft. So the only player in our secondary that's not draft eligible in the rotation is Caleb Downs right now. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think Christian Story might be coming back next year, man. So we got to start getting some depth in our secondary. Tresman Marshall is gone. Also, he's a fifth-year senior. Mm-hmm. I believe we have two D line, a second in our um, D line that are also fifth-year seniors. That's going to be gone or and draft eligible. Um, Braswell and Dallas Turner, they're going to the draft. Um, uh, um, they're draft eligible. And then um, the entire right side of our offensive line from center on, center um, guard, um, right tackle. Um, um, uh, tight end Dupree, and then um, um, uh, I, I believe a couple of our wide wide receivers are um, seniors, or if not, um, they're gonna they're gonna be transferring, man, because they haven't been getting a lot of playing time. Mm-hmm. So I believe we need to start to that, and also both of our our starting running backs are seniors. Mm-hmm. So um, I believe it, it's time we start getting some young guys in, so we don't have a slow start like we did this year, so mm-hmm. they can have a little bit of experience. It's like Michigan is pretty much, I believe Michigan. And um, uh, Michigan um, uh, and uh, Georgia are built exactly like Alabama um, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, big offensive line and um, um, uh, style defense. And so is Texas. Texas pretty much stole their style, but they have more guys in the rotation where they're getting um, 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 playing time and, and somewhat some experience. So even though they might not be full-time starters this year, when they get into a starting role, they pretty much have a little bit of experience and know know what to expect. Mm-hmm. So I believe we just need to start playing some of our guys, especially with Malachi more injured now. And then when Christian Story's been playing the dime, he hasn't been playing very well. So um, Jake Pope, Earl Little, a lot of guys are sitting wait, man. So I believe they should get they should get a little bit of, little bit of playing time, especially um, on our O line and then Justin Haynes too, man. He's been balling. So it's time to get a, a few of the guys in the rotation so we can be ready for next year also. Yeah, good point, Chad. Well, uh, I got to move to my next caller, man, but please call again next time and uh, appreciate the support. All right, thanks. Chad with a good call regarding, um, you know, getting some of these players opportunities. And I think what makes it challenging for uh, these guys to get on the field is this team isn't fully developed yet. So it's not like you can just sub in guys because Alabama really hasn't been at that point yet to where they're just, you know, been in a dominating position, right? It's kind of almost been survive in advance um, for these last couple games. And I know they, they got up on Mississippi State, but for the most part, I think that they've had to, um, you know, really, they're still building this team. And I think maybe at when it's time, some of these other guys will get opportunities, and who knows about Malachi Moore. Maybe we'll see some um, – if he can play this weekend, because Coach Saban said that he's not quite out yet. Maybe some other guys, like uh, Chad was saying, it would be nice to see Earl Little. Um, but also, I was listening to Coach Prime today in um, Colorado, and he's like, we love the transfer portal. And a lot of the guys that we're going to be recruiting aren't even in the transfer portal. And I think, you know, he he's right. I mean, the transfer portal world – Uh, must be so alluring to prospects who aren't playing right now. And 
that's I mean that that's kind of just the world that we live in. But you've seen if the guys stick it out and they remain on the roster. For example, a great story is uh, Chris Broswell. He I mean this guy could have left. He was behind William Anderson. He's behind Dallas Turner. Waited his turn and now just wait, just wait with his athleticism and the way that he's been playing. That guy at worst is a second round draft pick in the NFL. He's making money right by coming back. Um, so Jermaine Burton, another guy that could have left and he did transfer, but he transferred to the right school at the right time. Um, and he did what was right for him. So the, the transfer world is going to be, it's going to be interesting. You know, there's going to be guys that are processed out. There's guys that are going to make the jump. That's just kind of the world we live in. All right. Uh, we go back to the phone lines with the, uh, two Oh five. Um, and we'll start right now. Hey, you're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who am I on the line with and where are you calling in from? Uh, what's up, Kyle? This is Taylor from Birmingham. Hey, what's up, Taylor? How you doing, man? Appreciate you calling in. Good, good, good. So Alabama is five and one. This is a completely different team. Now everybody in the national media, they're like, "Oh, turning turning your heads to Tuscaloosa." Coach Saban hasn't lost his fastball, right? Um, the cake has been baked. Jalen Milrow, uh, we got a nice little bat, bite out of the cake when he throws for three twenty one. Um, I've been asking callers, you know, these five questions that are posed on the graphic, and we'll just start right now. You think Alabama's better um, or beats Arkansas by more than two touchdowns? The line's at 19 points right now. Well, first of all, I want to say I'm glad that cake is finally baked and <laughs> done with. Uh, you know, that, that week, I guess it was week three, that had me a little stressed out. But uh, I'm glad that cake's out of the oven. But I think this uh, – I don't know. 19 points is a little, eh, you know, it's a little high, uh, you know, especially with our first half play. I think that, um, you know, we have a tendency to not come out as as strong, you know, I think the past five years has kind of blinded everybody to mm-hmm. the old school Alabama football. When you have people like Mac Jones and Tua and yep. uh, Bryce coming out and just slinging it all over the yard. I saw some highlights today of an Arkansas game. Mm-hmm. It was Mac Jones' first start. Um, I guess it was an injured game. Somebody was injured, and Mac got to start. And that was when we had all the ride outs. And yep. I mean, hell, it was like thirty to nothing. And there was, I looked at the clock, and it was twelve minutes left in the second quarter. So I don't know how many uh, how many times we're going to be doing that. But yeah, nineteen is a little high. Uh, but if we come out and you know, uh, if Jalen picks up where he left off, and you know, we play a second half game like we usually do. I don't think it's impossible, but Arkansas is a sneaky good team. They yeah. have a really, really good quarterback. And, you know, luckily they're – well, not luckily. I hope he gets better. But, um, you know, Rocket Sanders is injured. Um, and I think they – you know, they've had a ton of close games, but I don't think their coaching is really helping them a bunch. You know, they've – even even goes back to last year, you know, they just can't seem to – they always put themselves in a position to, you know, to, to get that big-time win, and it just never works out for them. Coach, uh, I, I was going to ask you about a couple more um, questions. And one is about, uh, well, I, I'm not going to ask you about Dan Enos, but Coach Saban was asked about uh, Dan Enos today, uh, who's with Arkansas. And it was, remember Dan Enos, he came here. Um, and the the way that he left, the rumor is, is that he just left. Like he didn't even, this, okay, this is like the, the rumor. Is that he just left? And the no, way I heard did, did you? Did, so there's a there's an article that you could read, and it was by Yahoo Sports. So, um, Coach Saban he goes into a meeting, and <laughs> it's a it's a coach's meeting, and Dan Enos isn't there, and he's like, "Where's Dan?" And everyone's like, "I, I don't know, Coach. I don't know." Like, I think they I think some of the coaches knew, but they're like, "I don't, I don't know." And he's like. I can imagine. I he can was, imagine. Yeah, he the was like, yeah, he room. was, he was like, so, so the article says he's like, well, did anyone like hear from him? People were like, no. And Coach Saban's like, did anyone call him on the phone? So I guess his office, they, he just li- literally left a pencil on his desk and just bounced out. Um, that's what people say. Ooh, so I, 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 I don't know. I didn't know that. Um, I hope that uh, we pay some payback <laughs> for that. Maybe we will cover that. That 19 points does look a little more realistic uh, now. Saban was talking about it today. Not not that, but talking about Danny Enos and kind of the welcome back to Tuscaloosa. Okay, so um, 
your MVP through six games so far is? Oh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys that I think that probably, you know, you could give that title to. Um, but, you know, just to me, I think that Braswell has just been such, a, you know, he's got that. He's, he's made a couple of those big plays. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, and that Mississippi State game, I have been, we had that first drive and it didn't look that good. You know, we took a sack and I was kind of wondering, you know, God, I don't want this to be another stressful game. And then when he got that interception and ran it back, it just felt like old school Alabama football is back. We're gonna, Our defense is going to bail us out of any any wrong, you know, any slow mm-hmm. start or whatever. And, um, you know, and that bull rush that he has, that's got to be the most dominant move in and college football from any edge rusher right now. I mean, <laughs> I know Turner's fast on the outside, but that that Braswell bull rush is uh, that is deadly. Um, and uh, I, I guess I'd say him, but you know, I think uh, Keenan has really allowed. Yeah, yep. some I forget who called earlier. I think some coach called. I guess um, from I think he said he was a coach. Oh, I think we. Uh, I think actually, let's see if we can get him back. Hang on tight. Well, I, I, I'll, uh, I got disconnected. Sorry. It happens. For whatever reason, I get disconnected. So just give me, like, it'll take, like, two seconds. I'll be right. All right, my bad, Taylor. Um, all right, we, we, we're uh, we are talking about uh, Tim Keenan, Chris Braswell being your MVP. So, who who do you think that we're sleeping on when you kind of look to this team collectively? Who could maybe have you know a, a big next six games, or maybe a big game this coming weekend, or um, you know maybe some of that we just haven't really talked about. A sleeper, I don't know. I mean, I think that if our D-line keeps doing how it is doing and these rotational guys, you know, like Tim Smith, I think he's played mm-hmm. well this year. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, <laughs> after the Texas game, I was really trying to analyze and see who I could uh, lean on to, you know, really rely on the pass rush. I think him, and I think that – I think we may need to get James Smith in the game mm-hmm. a little more. Um, you know, freshman, the five-star mm-hmm. freshman, he's – he is, uh, you know – and I saw a video of Ibogi or Iboibi coaching him up the other day, and that's a good sign to see. You know, but these rotational defensive linemen, I think that they help the team a bunch. And uh, you know, obviously an offensive sleeper, I would say. Uh, you know, I'd say Isaiah Bond. I know he had a big catch the other week, but he, you know, he's so sure-handed. I don't. When was the last time he dropped a football? Like. I mean, that, that's the one thing about this whole wide receiver room. As much as they were criticized in the fall time, remember, like, all during the fall, we were like, these receivers, they can't yeah, catch the – these receivers have been – Even after the A-Date. Man, they've yeah, been money this the year. A-Date game, it was yeah. nobody, nobody can catch. We got the drop. Um, <laughs> I think they've done well. Um, uh, Eric is saying uh, – my brother mentioned Latham on the defense. Yeah, I mean, some of these guys in the defensive trenches, you're starting to see more and more. Even you got uh, Damon Payne kind of sprinkled in there as well. Um, yeah. Right? I mean, so it, it's good to kind of see some of these younger guys, the rotation like Chad from Miami was like, we need to start to see some of these guys. You're starting to see it. I mean, like, think about, um, I mean, Jaha Campbell. I mean, he, he gets in for Deontay Lawson, comes in with 14 tackles, and he only plays like 15 snaps against Texas A&M. That's okay. You know, you got the experience and – we now know that he can rise up when his name is called on again, which it will be soon. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll yeah. it'll be him and that guy. Um, that, yeah, he's phenomenal. I mean, he's absolutely phenomenal. He's scary, man. That Jackson Dart, Jackson Dart probably didn't want to play him again. I guarantee you that. Yeah, no way. Um, okay, so uh, who's your number one in college football right now? When you look kind of to the rankings, <laughs> I've listened to everybody's calls in here tonight. I mean, I mean, I'm a true Bammer, but I can't. I would have to say Georgia right now. Mm. Um, you know, I think they have, you know, and it's that's the good thing. It's not a six-week season, you know. It's, uh, I'm glad that the playoff selection isn't tomorrow. I'm glad we have six weeks to iron everything out because you, I think if you watch that, uh, that Texas A&M game, there's no way that you could think Alabama's the number one team in the nation. Mm-hmm. But if you know, I mean, if you know football, there's no way that you couldn't think that they could be the best, you know. Mm-hmm. They, they show potential and they shoot themselves in the foot more than any team 
I've never seen, I mean, make, uh, comparable to last year, I guess, and you saw what happened there. Uh, but if we can fix that, I mean, there's no telling how good this team could be. And I don't think Georgia is. I think you have to put them number one. But, uh, you know, and I mean, Oregon and Washington, they'll sort themselves out. I, I would lean Oregon over Washington for uh, maybe a three or a four spot. But Georgia, Oklahoma, uh, Michigan, you know, they hadn't played anybody. But uh, they seem dominant from what I've seen. Um, but I would say Georgia has got to be the number one team right now. But, you know, that's like I said, it's not a six-week season. We got some time to – hopefully we're hitting our stride by the time we get to LSU. All right, and my uh, my final uh, question for you is the toughest remaining game: Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, uh, trips to Kentucky or Auburn. What you got? Toughest team to play would be LSU. I would think mm-hmm. That's how deadly Jay Jay Daniels has been incredible this year. Um, but a toughest game overall, I would think you know LSU is tough to beat, but I mean Auburn has got to be that that game, especially if we come in there rolling. Uh, I forget who ever called and said that, but he made a great point. If we come in there rolling to, you know, look like we can solidify a chance to have a have a spot to beat Georgia and make the playoff, you know, then that, that's Auburn Super Bowl. I mean, yep. and playing in Georgia Air, I will, I've, I've just graduated from Alabama in 2021, and mm-hmm. I went to the Iron Bowl numerous times. And I'm not going back because every single time I go, it never goes well. And, I mean, <laughs> no, you're, you're I wish not, I would have went yeah. to the overtime game though. No, it's it's crazy. I'm I'm serious. Like every time I've been there too, it's bananas. Like it's absolutely bananas. I won't be going this year. Uh, Auburn, my uh, Auburn, though, too. my uh, my media credentials, uh, they didn't approve them. The girl, the the girl who does the media credentials at Auburn was like, "Nope, you're not a real media person." So. <laughs> I guess I'm like okay, so uh, I'll be you know, I'll, I'll be at home and I'll be uh, I'll be watching with you guys. Okay, man. Well, uh, I appreciate you, Taylor, calling in, man. Please call again. Thanks for the support. Absolutely, Kyle. All right, man. Take it easy. Roll tide. Um, all right, we got a, a two five six. This will be my last caller. So six oh two. I don't want to make you wait on the line. I know you already been on for two minutes, but um, our two five six will be our last caller of the night. So six oh two. You can hang up, and I'll get you next time. Okay, two five six. Let's do it right now. Hey, what's going on? You're on the line with uh, you're on the line with Kyle Henderson. Who I'm on the line with, and where are you calling in from? Kyle, this is Boots from Lake Gonville, Alabama. How you doing, Kyle? Hey, what's up, Boots? I appreciate you calling in. Uh, batting uh, clean up at the end. Um, Alabama five and uh-huh. one on the season. Um, how's it going? Welcome to the show. Well, uh, you know, I he's, he's fan Alabama fan. You know, they bother me with that crap. You know, the Arkansas. Uh, Four games in a row, they went down to they, in the fourth quarter. They was leading a, a tied a close within three points in the fourth quarter. They mm-hmm. act like this Arkansas just gonna come in lay lay down. Okay, well, uh, Kyle, you know that uh, the last two years they act like they can't even uh, tackle uh, that old boy. Uh, what's his name? KJ. K- yeah, KJ Jefferson, the quarterback. Yeah, he's well, he's really good. Yeah, they, they act like they can't even tackle. Now, they ain't Arkansas done lost four games in, in a row, so that's mm-hmm. a dangerous team. That's probably more dangerous team and, that we're going to face. And everybody think, oh, well, how many won't beat them by? Mm-hmm. It, you know what? We'll be lucky to come out of there with a field goal victory mm-hmm. because I, 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 I can see it that our players, they ain't got the – you'll see. You'll see come out. They, they ain't got the big head. So people are not to be telling them that. And anyway, we on a roller coaster anyway. Mm-hmm. One slip up and where, where we at? Sitting yep. at the half, right? We ain't gonna be playing for nothing. Well, they need to get the head back right and go and win this thing. I told you after three games, I said that if they left Miller roll along after three games, they'll be be cheering by the championship. See what they're doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? No, but, <laughs> I, I, but, I, but I well hold on, Boots, <laughs> because I think you're right. Like Arkansas really has I mean, nothing really to play for, which makes them a very dangerous team. So they, they go in and they upset and they ruin Alabama season. Sam Pittman, he's a great coach, have a good quarter a really good quarterback. Like and, and the thing is, if you think about it, the college football playoffs, it doesn't make sense at all, right? If you tried to explain it to somebody else who didn't follow college football, you couldn't. It's a group of people who get into a room and choose it's a committee who chooses the team to go into the playoffs like last year Alabama should have been in the playoffs they weren't we saw what happened to TCU yeah. um, so the thing about it is Alabama is technically already in the playoffs right now like 
every game is yeah. the playoffs. So you lose one game, you don't make you don't qualify for what could be a national title. So you're you're basically in the playoffs already. Go ahead, go uh, go ahead, Boots. So continue though. That's it. There it is. You just put the nail in the coffin right there. Cause mm-hmm. uh, they act, everybody acting like, oh, they done. They won three games row. Beat Texas and m Now look here. Texas and m had a real good defense. Offense, you know, just they probably be a C grade offense. Mm-hmm. And look, uh, this uh, this offense this week's probably a little bit better because uh, they're going to run, push every time a running back runs. It's two or three players pushing them. Mm-hmm. Now, the Bama got to be uh, ready and prepared for this. You know, this is a and, and we're to win a stay at the house. Mm-hmm. You know, when it's like that, I, I don't want to hear all that talk about. Oh, that's how many we're gonna beat them by. Go out there and play without mistakes, and you ought to be able to beat them. But that, that's the thing they ain't did yet. And, mm-hmm. and 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 you know what? It's looking like it's time, Kyle, to yep. play without all them stupid mistakes. <laughs> fourteen, right, fourteen penalties for ninety nine. Yeah, I appreciate you two boots. Take it easy, buddy. Yeah. yeah. All right, Boots, uh, ending the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, look, we all have respect for Sam Pittman and for KJ Jefferson. I mean, those are two quality names that have been around. I mean, two years ago when they were back at uh, Tuscaloosa, Bryce Young had to throw for like 600 yards or something like that to beat the Hogs. Last year, ironically, it was Jalen Milrow who came in for Bryce Young when Bryce Young went down from then – Trey uh, Drew Sanders, right, who was a transfer. He was the one who kind of hurt, I thought. The guy is outstanding. Um, And then – it was Jameer Gibbs who uh, wheeled Alabama to that victory in Fayetteville uh, this year. Uh, Hogs coming back. Did you see Alabama ate a uh, uh, roasted a pig? That was on Jalen Key's uh, Instagram. Literally, like in their cafeteria, they roasted a pig. Um, so these guys are getting ready for homecoming. Uh, we will have more coverage for you coming up right here on um, Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys joining me tonight. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, uh, so you guys are always notified when there are videos dropped. Getting closer to 94,000 subscribers. Our goal is 100,000 subscribers by December. Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe. One more time, coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube saying goodnight.